Okay, so I'm slowly um, taking the quarters off this elk and um, boning up the back strap and all the rib meat. And one way of keeping the, the meat in good shape is to wrap it in these uh, clear plastic garbage bags. Um, I don't leave these bags on. I take them off when I get back to the meat pool to let the meat set up and clean it up a little bit further. But while I'm up here in the burn, and uh, it's a great way to keep the bugs off and keep the dirt from kicking around on it. Because eventually we're going to throw these in our backpacks and run them down the hill. All right. So my partners have showed up and we're uh, just loading up our packs. And we got going to have to do about six trips to get this guy out. I've got my uh, load ready to go here. I've got my one hind quarter loaded up in the plastic bag inside my pack. Um, I'm going to strap the antlers to the, uh, to the bag. I've got enough sort of straps and stuff on here that hopefully they'll be secure and keep them from swinging back and forth. I use a little extra rope to uh, suck it all together. Anyways, we got to make our way back down to the bottom of this uh, hill here. Probably about a thousand feet or 1200 feet down to the down to the road. Okay, so here we are. We're back at our meat pole and we've got our elk <laughs> um, loaded up in our pack here and we're about to hoist it up on the meat pole and I'll show you what that looks like in a second here. So guys, go ahead and we'll see how it goes. Ready, Jeff? Yep. There's another one for you. I can give you some more if you want. Perfect. That's probably good though. It'll do for now. Jeff's over here tying off the load. And then Ryan will just go ahead and slide that pack off and we'll see what we got left. Good there, Jeff? Yep. So there's oh, that plastic bag that we had. Uh, that appears to have worked out pretty good. Yep. And we'll slip that plastic bag off. And then when we're all wrapped up here, it'll look something like this one over here, which is well, covered in a canvas bag. And we'll just sort of walk. So we got this, here. our ham cool. hanging off the meat pole here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over it real carefully and we're going to pick off all the little bits and pieces of dirt and hair and stuff before we put the game bag on. You'll notice here I've left the testicle as evidence of sex for this for this guy and up here we've got a little patch of hair for evidence of species and then Jeff's just going to start picking away at that. Uh, I was going to say on 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 the other court hind quarter I assume you guys you guys left the part of the penis coming through here or right here or something like that for absolutely the yeah. sex right which is generally easier than the testicle yeah this was sort of the first option because we're splitting this out with uh, with our partner ryan we actually had to have evidence of sex on both sides and there's only one penis to go between each yeah. ham so the better job you do in the field of keeping dirt and hair off your off your uh, meat then there's a whole lot less work at this point and this turned out really well so ryan and i did a good job and there's almost no hair or, or dirt on this guy here. The other thing about having it nice and clean like this is you get big points from the butcher when you take it in. They don't have to scrape hair off and shovel off mud and you know they like they really like it if you can do a half decent job. Okay. So Jeff's just gonna pull up a game bag over top of this guy. And then we'll get a roll of tape hanging out here, and we're going to tape up the top of that here. So one of the problems we have right now is it's a bit warm, and there's some flies around. And if there's any way for a fly to get in and touch the meat, they'll figure it out. So we use black tape to wrap around the top there, and it just it sucks up enough and provides a seal up top there so that the flies can't work their way down. And over here, there's some other guys that have been hanging up their elk, and... They didn't do it the Eat Wild way. I'm not sure what's going on here with these hooves sticking out. We would normally cut those off and leave them in the bush and do a little nicer job of uh, hanging them up. Uh, Something we'll show you here is the difference between the bags. These are more like your traditional cheesecloth-y type bags. And the flies here have been blowing where these two quarters touched. And there's actually fly eggs inside the, uh, the cheesecloth bag, which, I mean, we'll just sweep them off here eventually. And I don't think there's much chance that it's warm enough that they can hatch into maggots. But those kind of bags work better, I think. So we're just cleaning up Cole's elk that was uh, hung up in with uh, not the best game bag. So the flies were able to get through and actually lay their eggs on the meat. If it's warm enough, these eggs will 
actually um, hatch and you'll have basically maggots working their way into the meat. So we've taken the game bags off and we're going to take a few minutes and we're just going to carefully like slide your knife over top and then clean that right off. So we'll... Up over here, we have bags that have maybe a loin and then a neck or uh, maybe that's rib meat, I'm not sure. But we try to separate them so that they don't, you don't get a whole bunch of loose pieces of meat laying in together where they have a tendency to uh, go bad between the pieces. Like, you know, you get opportunity for bacteria on the two surfaces to get together and grow lots more bacteria. So here, these guys have got, I don't know what in here, but it's definitely more than one piece of meat. So here we're just, we're just working on organizing it so we're going to have a string here with the separate pieces of meat separated. And this is going to go up here in a minute. Okay, if you go around a couple times, you, you know, you pretty well got all the pressure off the knot anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Then, you must have tied the bullet up sometime, right? Yeah. So we've got our elk hung up here, and I don't know if we talked about this earlier, but we do um, put a tarp over top because uh, you want to keep it cold, but you also want to keep it dry. Um, the next thing we're going to show you guys how to do is uh, what we do to transport the meat to get home. Um, you know, we've got the meat nice and cold now, but we've got a long drive ahead of us, and we're, and we're heading down to the lower mainland where it's much warmer than up here in the north country. So we're basically going to build a little cooler inside of our jet boat here. So we've, we've put a couple of... Uh, um, the, the floorboards of the jet boat are actually fo foam, so that's a nice insulated layer. We're going to use a bunch of tarps here, and then we're going to lay over some uh, thermal rest and sleeping bags and cover it all up and make a nice little cooler. So we'll show you how we do that here in a, in a big pile, we've got two elk in here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and just uh, start covering it up and make it into a cooler. We've got a couple sleeping bags, you can use those. So now we've got our uh, thermal rest over top of our meat, we're just going to wrap it up with some tarps. Okay, so we're all loaded up, ready to go. Um, we're hoping the meat will stay nice and cold. I've got the antlers uh, stowed away in, inside the truck here. And now we've put our meat in the back of the jet boat, but most of the time I wind up putting the meat in the back of my pickup truck. And it's uh, even more important to uh, wrap it up and insulate it because you got quite a bit of heat from your exhaust system underneath the back of your pickup. Don't so, lay it right on the deck of the truck. Yeah, so I never lay it on the back of the truck. and. Uh, Wrap it up underneath your thermal rest or over top of your thermal rest and do what you can to keep that cold air that you, um, to keep it cold all the way to the butcher. Great. So we just drove through the night and we rolled up to Sumas Meats. He's our game butcher here in uh, Abbotsford, BC. So we roll up with our jet boat here and then we hand bomb the uh, quarters over into the meat shop here. And then uh, the butcher puts them on hooks here. And then he takes a little bit of a list of what you want done. Steaks, roasts, osoboko hamburger put your name on it and then he'll uh slam it in the freezer here you want to roll across the scale see what she weighs in it yeah absolutely yeah, of course let's do it that's good you we'll need that. to uh, fill in the log book uh to provide uh a record of receipt for the animal so there'll be a uh some documentation where you have to write in your license number um the date you killed the animal and what type of animal and, and the size and such so you're sitting at about two a good 280 anyways cool. a little over 280. excellent perfect filthy the freezer yeah and you make a happy butcher if you show up and your meat's not covered in dirt and hair and flies blow so hopefully he's happy well you bring it in clean and get it back clean pretty sure you've seen yeah. worse yeah. <laughs> right on all right